two American League teams. It's the Tampa Bay Rays against the Chicago White Sox. And it's on 2K Sports. It's all about the American League. The Chicago White Sox, they're looking to get one in front of their home fans. A game changer, Alex Rios. We're going to get to see if he can change this game today. Thank you for joining us Thursday night, Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. The starting pitching, we'll see Jared Washburn. So Steve, uh, Tampa Bay hitters, from their perspective, what's in line for him? A good looking lefty on the mound right here against the lineup that can put some runs up on the board. So pretty even matchup. So it's going to come down to which side executes better than the other. Oftentimes we say good pitching can beat good hitting. Sponsored by Pepsi, a look at Joe Madden's starting lineup. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, the most versatile player in all of baseball, Ben Zobers, can play a number of positions anywhere in the infield, anywhere in the outfield. Pretty sure if you asked him to catch, he would do that. But the thing is, you don't want to take that bat out of the lineup. Let's play ball. And it's Kyle Crawford at the plate. Yesterday, the Rays taking the loss. A one game, one opportunity to try and take the rubber match now against the White Sox. Washburn set and delivers. It's fouled oh. off. Now looking how that one turned out, they lost big time. Well, by seven runs, and there's only one thing you can say: blowout. Here's the pitch, oh. and Kyle Crawford looks at that one. That's for a ball. It'll leaving it up. 273 is average last year against the White Sox here in Chicago. And here's a called strike at the letters, and it's one of two. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infielders. You can't connect on that one. Crawford comes up empty. Credit the pitcher right there. Good two strike pitch down and away. Not much he could have done with that even if he had made contact. And we've got Bartlett batting. Well, Jason Bartlett in 2009 had a couple little injuries, nagging injuries that kept his numbers down. 66 RBIs, 14 home runs. You have to go back to 2008 when he was the most valuable player to get them to the World Series. Ball one uh, to begin this at bat. One and oh. Jason Bartlett a uh, just made the entire difference on the ball club that advanced to the postseason a couple of years ago. He shored up their defense. Oh, well, he absolutely drilled towards the hole. And that one's down. That's the team's first hit. Now and batting. a moment to check the out the defensive Bay alignment Bay. for the White Sox. Thoughts, Steve? Anybody Evans stand out? Well, oh, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Washburn set and delivers oh. off the plate with a fastball and it's one and zero. Oh. Pauses and now the one oh Strike one. And he comes back with one in there and it's one and one a fastball up in the zone like that a pitch a lot of guys like to hit he just couldn't swing the bat swings lines this one softly to right and it's through that's a base hit for Longoria. Now Eastern batting. Division standing starting to take shape here in April. You're in our State Farm standings board. Yankees in first place. It's the Blue Jays in second. Third goes to the Rays. Orioles fourth. And it's the Red Sox in last place. And it's Pena batting. Runners on first and second with one out. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0-1. Good patience as Carlos Pena lets it go by. That'll even it up. Well, Carlos Pena put together some power numbers. Struggled a little bit. Oh, both runners on the move. Oh, man, the double steal worked as he beat the throw. And he fooled him a bit there. Check swing, but it's a strike two and two. Two two pitch still two two Carlos Pena's play at first base maybe uh, uh, go a little on notice because of his power numbers but he's not bad smash towards the hole 
And Conurco makes the catch. And the runners will have to stay put, second and third. Well, he keeps the runners right where they are, so now he's just an out away from working his way out of danger and keeping this game tied. And we're going to see Zobrist here. Checks his swing that time, but it's still a strike on one. Washburn set and delivers. Well hit towards the middle. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And out on the mound, we've got Matt Garza. He's starting for Tampa Bay. And he gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, Matt Garza has some of the best stuff of any pitcher in Major League Baseball. A fastball that can reach upwards of 98 miles an hour. A curveball, a slider, and a changeup that he uses to keep hitters off balance. If he can ever figure out a way to put a full season together, he could be a big winner in Major League Baseball. Garza with a delivery. Good hard sinker that time in control on the count now 0 and 2. The hitter needs a two strike approach. Shorten up the swing. Think about going the other way. Straight away left. And the catch by Crawford. One down. Number 10. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. Well Matt Garza's numbers don't belie that he had a pretty good season in 2009. 8 and 12 record but an ERA under 4. And this guy to me has the best stuff on that Rays staff. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here for Matt Garza, John. One of the problems was no run support. He was one of those unlucky pitchers who played in tight games. Yeah, and that's just going to happen. But, you know, he has such great stuff that eventually he's going to figure out a way to win one nothing and 2-1 games like the great ones do. Now, Paul Canerco batting with a runner on first while leading the league in home runs. And Garza gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. That's it, foul by Canerco. Swing and a shot down the left field line. All the way to the wall. Ramirez is headed for third. Now we'll take a quick look at the Rays and their alignment defensively. So, Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here. Well, they've got a terrific outfielder in B.J. Upton, a guy who has all the tools to really impact the game. He's, he's a guy that has center field skills playing in the corners more often than not. Great throwing on. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's in his fifth MLB year. Runners at first and third, one away. This one swung on and driven hard. Upton to feel this one. And Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. And Ramirez is home. Clearly, he would have loved to have found a hole out there, but at least in making this out, and the pitch over the heart of the plate, he did something right by advancing the runner. Now we'll see if they can take advantage of that and get that run home. And Beckham's in the box. Getting out in front. Any time of the ball game, you want to do that. Now you try and build on it. And Gary, you can never underestimate the importance of an early lead. It can allow the pitcher to go right at the hitters and pitch with confidence. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Nice way to get things started in this one. The White Sox lead one to nothing. We'll have the six, seven, and eight hitters coming up next. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. Gabe Kaplan. It's going to be Kapler. Washburn set and delivers. And Conerco getting to it. 
and he'll step on the back. That'll be the first out. And here in the early part of the season, we have a look at the Central Division standings brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. Twins in the second spot. Third, the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. Line drive, that's foul towards first. No balls, one strike, Washburn. Watches that one for a called strike. Nothing and two. The pitcher's got him right where he wants him now. Up ahead, 0-2. He could waste a pitch if he wants to. Swing and a hot shot. Washburn. Over to Canerco. Two away. Oh, Gary, that's a nice play right there on the mound. Able to grab it and then toss it over easily to first base for the out. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Gonna have to look for a little bit more patience at the plate in this game because last game out struck out three times chasing pitches out of the zone. And one swung on a miss by Upton. Strike evens it up. And a little extra giddy up on that one as he just blows it right by him. Swing and lined up the middle. And it's through. Base hit Upton. That's gonna back. bring up Deanna Navarro. Take a look at who led the league in Number stolen 30. bases last year. It's brought to you by State Farm. Well, two of the most lethal weapons in all of baseball will be playing in this game today. The stolen base. Two of the top guys last year. And when they get on base, they put so much pressure on their on the opposition, it's almost impossible to keep them at one. Oh, and he takes off for second. Oh. And it's not in time, and he beats the throw. Washburn set and delivers. He watches that fastball. It'll leave it up to count at 101. Oh, he's having some kind of season this year, Gary. Really the guy leading this team's offense and some kind of offensive production. Oh. Just off the inside part of the plate. Two and one. Here's a fly ball to straightaway left. And that one's put away to retire the side. So Jared Washburn holding those runs down. He's off to a commanding start. And it'll be the White Sox. Looking to the lineups. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. Alex Rios. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And the play made by Pena. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. Back there in deep left center. This is a one-hopper off the wall. And he's in at second with a double, one up. Well, this could be the start right here if this offense needed in this inning. A nice double right there with only one away. This could ignite this offense, and possibly big things could happen. Martin looking to knock in a run. One of the best batting averages in the league. One on, one out. Garza with a delivery. Look out as that one runs in and hits him. Now sometimes that fastball just runs in on you. You can't get out of the way. He couldn't get out of the way there. And here's Mark Kotze. Oh, Gary, that hit batter we just saw. Now two runners on base. A little rally starting here. And maybe the pitcher getting a little bit rattled. As you can see, a bit out of control. He hit that batter. Now he's all over the place right now as he drills another guy. Three on and one out. And here's the first one. Starts him out with a sinker for a strike. 
Well, Gary, as we see this pitcher now, things starting to unravel a little bit here, having hit two batters in this inning, clearly starting to lose control. Good hard sinker. Swung on and missed 0-2. And, and Steve, the, the question here in this inning now, is he going to be able to find some consistency on the Well, I mean, right now, also a disadvantage because the umpire's got to be looking at this, wondering if any of it's intentional. They may be looking to see if he does it again to kick him out of his game. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. And Garza gets him swinging for the first strike. Oh, he was way behind on that one. Must have been looking for something else. Lined right at the second baseman. And it's through into the gap. Should be extra bases. And Pierzynski comes in. And the second run comes around. And Kotze also home. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. WPA graph. Let's see what damage was done with that double, courtesy of Pepsi. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And it gets through. Great swing today. Now two hits. Fantastic chance here. There's Carlos Quentin with two outs and two on. Look at the matchup. 246 against the Rays. Swing and a liner to right center. That's down. The run's coming in. This lineup's just unbelievable. They, they found momentum and they've been able to carry it on and on and on. Uh, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. And Beckham's in the box. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. Swung on, line to right field. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way on that kind of pitch. Well, that you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best. A smash to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Struggling time for the pitcher, Matt Garza. He's allowed five runs through two innings of work. Now. The White Sox are out in front, five to nothing. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. And Carl Crawford, Bay Bay Left fielder, number 13, Carl Crawford. Here's Crawford's first look. Ball. Just missed with the fastball, 1 0. Just a 214 career batting average against Jared Washburn. Swing and a foul straight back. Swing soft liner towards left center and that's going to be a base hit for Crawford the plate. and that'll the bring Jason Bay Bartlett Bay. to the plate. Well, Carl Crawford can impact the game in a lot of ways. Let's check out last season and how he ended up in the rankings. Second in stolen bases, fifth in triples and of course he got his base hits. He was ranked in the top ten in hits in the league getting the job done finding a way to get on base. Curveball just misses one and oh. The 1 0 now. Strike and he takes a strike on that fastball. 1 1. Well, climbing the ladder with that four seam fastball, trying to get the hitter to elevate his eyes. He gets the strike on it, and the hitter doesn't pull the trigger. Oh. Curve ball just off the black, and it's 2 and 1. Well, a good count right here for the hit and run. A 2 and 1 count. Does the Swung on, hit softly, line to left. And that one is in there, his second hit today. And that play. will bring up in this key moment rate. Evan Longoria. Well, you're talking about a pitcher who didn't read the sky report. I mean, everyone knows this guy's a high ball hitter. He threw one up there and he got it whacked. Here's the pitch. 
Oh, and he takes it inside, 1 0. Oh. Five at bats last year, three hits off Washburn. Oh, Cutter two. just off the black, and he falls behind, 2 0. Oh. Swung on, hit in the air to right center, and it's going to be Quentin. Roams over, puts it away. The These were the hitters the with the most home ready. runs around the league First last game. year, courtesy Number of State Farm. There is Pena. Pena. Great numbers at the top. Well, just big time power last year from this gentleman. He showed what he could do last year. When a pitcher made a mistake, he didn't foul it off. He put it up in the seats where it belonged. That's why he's a top home run hitter oh. last year in all baseball. First pitch he let go by, and it uh, was a ball, 1 0. The 1 0 pitch. And that swung on and hit Rios. And it falls in there. That's going to be a single. Good offensive chance here. Well, even though they lost the last game, he had two big hits, and that's a good sign if you're the manager of this team that he's starting to swing the bat really well. And here's the first one. Plays off a called strike of the knees, 0 1. 3 for 14 last year against the White Sox here in Chicago. And he leaves that one alone. Ben Zobris, patience, and that'll even up the count. Well, a breakout year for Ben Zobris in 2009. You talk about versatility. He can play anywhere, and he plays them all great. But 2009, he swung the bat. A shot up the middle. Beckham able to pull That's that one. Play. They've got the bases loaded now. Right fielder, number 27. It's going to be Kapler. Now, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Washburn set and delivers. Watches that fastball that goes by him for a strike. The pitch. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. This one finds its way around. Rolling all the way to the wall. And Bartlett also scores. And they manage to knock in two runs. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce and they are. Now Pepsi gives us a look at how much that triple helped our Pepsi WPA graph. And we're going to see Joyce here. We'll try and rebuild momentum. Looked like they had lost it earlier. Right now it's coming back to him. Uh, Gary, he got some good wood on that last hit. Put it in play. Now he's closing the gap right here. See if they can make up this difference. As Gene McDaniels used to say, just chip, chip, chip it away. And that's what you want to do in these kind of games. Washburn set and delivers. And Ramirez feels the ball. Throws on to first, side is retired. They pick up four hits in the inning, wind up with four crossing the plate. Nice job by the Rays. They've got to work their way back, and they've started. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. Had a double his last time up. The first pitch. Back up the middle, and that'll put Brzezinski on first. That brings up Mark Tian. Fans, be sure to tune in tomorrow night. We'll see Torrey Hunter and the Los Angeles Angels. They play host to the New York Yankees. We hope you'll be there. Things get underway at 10 Eastern. Hey, Gary, do you think John will buy us dinner in town that time? We go watch that ball game? In the top 10 in hits. Runner on first. And they can't make contact with Garza's delivery. He's getting it done all season long, Gary, and a guy they're really looking to count on. And here's the pitch. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. He has to back up for it, comes away with the out, and they'll hold him at first base. At the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Katze into the batter's box. Just faced each other a couple of times, 0 for 2 against Matt Garza. Garza with a delivery. Lined hard down the left field line. And this is a fair ball heading towards the corner. And here's Pazinski heading home. Good offensive chance here. 
You want your hitters to go with the pitch. Don't try to force things. The ball's away. He drives it away. Use the whole part of that plate and the whole part of that bat. He did. Kids, you want to learn how to hit? That's how you do it. And Pierzynski comes in. At the plate. Well, that's 10 hits right now in this ball game for him. And, you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. Harper coming in now, and he'll be the new pitcher. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. Well, there are days when you just don't have it, and clearly this was one of those days. Now let's see if the bullpen can slow this offense down. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. And a struggling season in 2009 for Alexia Ramirez. Here was a guy that they thought they would put at the top of their lineup. He'd steal a lot of bases, but unfortunately, he got off to such a bad start. Well, Alexei Ramirez, yet another one of the uh, Cuban defectors getting a chance to play Major League Baseball. Well, the White Sox seem to think that he could be a top of the order guy. He struggled in 2009, but if he can rebound from the 2009 season and have a season like he did in 2008, and along with Gordon Beckham, they have a great one two punch. And he starts Canerco out. Swing shoots this one towards the gap, right center. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. And they get that run in. And he's in as well. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. A big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. Runner on second RBI opportunity for Carlos Quinton. Steve, we've seen them continue to charge it up at the plate, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped. Now that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Not a comfortable lead yet, but it's an early statement. Well, it's just there's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. And another, wow, that hitting coach is smiling. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading and hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. And Beckham's in the box. He's got four hits in 13 lifetime at bats off the Rays. And the first pitch up the middle. Oh my, how did he get out of the way of that? Those are scary. And Canerco will score. Some days you're hot, some days you're even hotter. Right now they are red hot. That's three consecutive hits he's given up. He can't be out of gas yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. And Alex Rios up. Well, they definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. The runs just keep on coming right now. Quality at bat after quality. Ball is blasted. A long high drive. Deep the center field. Gone. Goodbye. A three-run shot. With that three-run homer, they just extended their lead. Trying to prevent the RBI production here. It's not a bad idea to go down and away. That's a pretty good pitch, but you know, sometimes the hitter wins. And in this situation, a three-run shot. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. AJ Kurzinski. Two outs, space is empty. Now the first pitch. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 1. Sometimes we talk about poor pitching performances. When you get them, you get monster offense. Swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. And this rolls all the way to the wall. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, they need a big out right here, Gary. I mean, they're giving up some runs in this inning. They need to get outs right now just, again, to show that they can get them. Mark Tian looking to knock in a run. 
First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. So they put some distance between themselves and their opponents here with this big inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. We'll get a look at that leadoff hitter due up here in the inning. A look at the manager, Ozzie Gian. And now his lineup is in overdrive. An exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. Here's the pitch to Upton. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. No balls. One strike. Washburn. Strike that time, and it's 0-2. Now that he's elevated his eyes looking for that high fastball, let's see if he goes back down in the zone. And the cut fastball's in there. Strike three, one away. You know, what I like about this is on 0-2, he didn't mess around. He didn't try to nibble to get him chase off the plate. He goes right at him and just gets the strikeout. Here's the first pitch. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. And that's going to be a base hit for Navarro. Now so Kyle back. Crawford will come up next. Left fielder, number 13. Kyle Crawford's Carl always Carl. a threat, Gary, to lead the league in stolen bases. Always a guy, too, to possibly lead the league in triples. He, if he hits it in the gap, it is some kind of fun to watch because he can fly. Oh, that is hit well off the bat of Crawford. Two away. Now we're not too far along into the baseball season so far, but let's take a look at how the Rays have done so far in comparison to the rest of the American League. Third in triples, fourth in stolen bases, and this offense, that ability to drive the ball, a real asset for them, a doubles machine ranked in the top ten in doubles. Washburn set and delivers. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. And if you just joined our broadcast, great time to be on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, and John Crump. And here's Mark Kotze. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one. Swung the bat well. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Swing and a shot down the left field line. And the catch by Crawford. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles. First in batting average. And they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. Swung and a fly ball. That one is foul. Here it comes. Swing and a miss with that fastball. No balls, two strikes. It's tough for hitters to protect both sides of the plate. You can't protect the outside and the inside, especially when you're throwing your fastball down and away. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. Two for three thus far. They're winning right now, and his three RBIs have to be a factor. Ramirez settles in first pitch hit up the middle Harper and he throws on to first that'll retire the side only five pitches to get out of that inning that'll rest your arm we're through four and it's Evan Longoria to lead us off third base three Evan Longoria Can't wait long enough for that one, and he starts out with a strike. Shot towards the hole, and Canerco makes the catch. Here's a look at the teams that uh, drummed up the extra base hits last year, our state farm leaderboard. Number one, the Yankees. Second, the Rangers. Third spot, the Red Sox. Jays fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, anytime you have a whole team of guys who can hit for extra bases, it makes the defense spread out so much, and it gives you room to do other things. 
This team is great at it. One of the best in the league last year, just hitting the balls in oh. gaps, hitting the ball over the wall. And that's why they score so many runs, because they're always in scoring position. The 1-1. One, one. This to the fastball outside, 2-1. Now Przinski sets up. Liner towards the hole. And in there, he's two for three today. The throw. Stepping that will bring up Ben Zobris. I take a look at how last Second season turned out for Carlos Payton. First in home runs, Zobris. eighth in walks. And he was, of course, in the top ten in slugging percentage. That ability to hit for extra base hits is a value to his team, and his manager loves it. Well, 2009 was a break. That swung on and a liner here. That gets in there. Zobris, base hit. Boy, it's a play. good opening the for this Tampa Bay, Bay offense. Right fielder, number Joe 20. Madden called Ben Zobris his MVP, his most versatile player. If there was a need, Zobris seemed to fill it. Well, and along with Carlos Pena, they formed a pretty formidable duo in the middle of that Tampa Bay Rays lineup. And very unexpected. You want to see if he can do it again, though, to prove that he's an everyday big league player. Shots him out with a cut fastball for a strike. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. Now it's two away. Stepping up to the plate, the Tampa Bay Rays designated hitter. And we're going to see Joyce here. Joyce. Here's the first pitch. Way out there with the curveball, 1-0. Now, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. And that misses as well. Three and oh. Washburn set and delivers. And that swung on and hit. Rios. That'll do it as they put that one away. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. Middle of the fifth inning now to the home half. And Paul Canerco to bat. He doubled home a couple in his last at bat. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one, Gary. you got to believe they're going to pitch him a little bit more carefully this time around. He delivers. That's it foul by Canerco. Can't catch up with it on two. Now, if you got a chance to watch the last ball game, you saw the quality at bat he had. He worked the count, got a pitch he could hit, and hit the ball out of the ballpark. Good piece of hitting. Nice job. Right Rung him up. Strike Number three. 20. Count that one as a K. Carlos, Carlos Quentin. Quentin. Batting now. There's one down. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quentin. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Hit hard to second. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles. First in batting average. And he's also the best at hitting in the clutch. Leading and hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Off the wall on a hop. He throws. Quinton around third, headed for the plate, and bango, he slams into him. He is out. Oh, and that collision was fierce, but he held on to it. He'll hold there at second base, credited with a double. Bang, bang, play. Catcher able to hold on here. Let's take a look. Well, this is one of the toughest plays for a catcher to make. He knows he's got to watch the ball, but he hears footsteps. That locomotive is coming down the line. Somehow he's able to hang on. Here's the first pitch. Head up the middle. Harper throws the first side is retired. Well, that was a quick inning right there. Seven pitchers. And we'll see the Rays coming up next. 
And Upton settles in. One for two in the ball game. Fielder, number four, B.J. Upton. Washburn set and delivers. A swing and a miss, Upton. Strike one. Boy, that good late movement down, that cut fastball, unbelievable action on that pitch. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And Upton is set down. That's one down. Number 30. Navarro at the plate. He singled in his last at bat. First pitch on the way. And that's in for a strike. Some success, three for ten against Washburn. And it goes foul. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Zaldivaro is retired. Left fielder, number 13. And Carl Crawford to bat. He's the stolen base leader in the American League at the moment. Here's Crawford's first look. Hard grounded a short. And Ramirez feels the ball. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. That's called short work of three. Took six pitches. The white. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. But one of the things you have to do is when a pitcher makes mistakes, you have to make him pay for it. And twice last game, he did exactly that. Got pitches he could drive and took it over the wall. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. It's up against the wall and a bounce. Pulls into second with that double, so he's in scoring position now with nobody out. He talked about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four-hit day for him. He is locked in. And here's Martina. It's fouled away. And that's a strike. Martian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, that's a great pitch right there. That hard sinker. He just can't catch up. Well, a key contributor in that last win. Three big hits in that game. And he's seeming to find a way again to get it started. Runners at the corners with no one out. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Ground ball to Longoria. The second, there's one. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get it. Number 24, Scott Kotsetnik. He goes right with the pitch and slaps the ball in the left field. And if you try and pull that pitch, you're probably not even going to get the bat on it. That's a ground ball to second base if he pulls that one. First pitch, line shot into center field. That's two gone. Now Here's a look at what's coming up for the Rays. The Chicago series ends tonight. And then a home series facing the Jays and their all-star Vernon Wells. That should be a great series. They really match up well. That's a three-game series. Then the next series at home brings in a worthy opponent, the Oakland Athletics. Lots of home games. That's always a good thing. And doing the pitching, J.P. Howell. He's been brought in to take over for the Rays. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? There's a swing, line drive, center field. And in there. He gets that one down. That's his third hit, three for five. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. He just can't seem to find an answer for him. And he starts Canerco out. This one could be trouble down the right field line. And it's off the right field wall. There's the throw. And Kotze crosses the plate. 
Now batting. Get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on it coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got to first base. That's how you get in safely to second. First pitch to Quinton. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. J.P. Howe runs the count to 0 2. The hitter's got to be in defense mode right here. Just looking to make contact. Got to shorten up the swing. Struck him out. He gets out of this with just a little hurt. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. Lights. And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. And it's Jason Bartlett to lead us off. Lined out in his last at bat. First one to Bartlett. Here's the pitch. Fastball is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Now Gary, with this big lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. Line drive foul. left of the bag and foul. Lays off that ball two. Well, that two seam fastball has to be thrown down in the zone. You throw it up, it flattens out, and you can get hurt. Hit on the ground towards second. Back up. He's One out. away. Up to the plate for the Tampa Bay Rays. Third base. Evan Longoria at the plate. Evan Longoria. Evan Longoria has established himself as one of the best third basemen in all of baseball, if not the best, in such a short time. Only two full seasons in the major leagues. 33 home runs, 113 oh. RBIs in 2009. And he lays off the pitch outside in low ball one. Certainly Evan Longoria not happy that a teammate was injured in his first major league season, but it brought him up earlier probably than Tampa Bay would have had him at the major leagues, and they're happy it did because he was ready. All right, you know what I like about it? When they brought him up, they knew he was going to be a special player, and a lot of times they try to protect guys. They put him hitting eighth or ninth to protect him. They stuck him in the middle line and said, here, go play and produce for us, and he helped lead them to the World Series in 2008. Liner towards the hole and in there second hit for him in the ball game and his fourth plate appearance now that will bring up Carlos Pena let's take a quick look at Evan Longoria's season last year fourth in RBIs seventh in doubles and the power numbers were there as he was ranked in the top 10 in home runs and it's always nice to have a bat like that in your lineup. One out man on first. Washburn set and delivers. Ball. Missed ball one. Look okay, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitch is throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big Ball. lead. Everything feels good. So he pulls the string on the circle change, one and two. Now Przinski positions himself, and Carlos Pena misses strike three. I tell you, that kind of that kind of breaking ball in the low 80s is awfully tough to hit. And I think uh, last couple of pitches he faced, it, it didn't seem like he was ready for that fastball. Yeah, he got some off-speed pitch, the previous pitch, but you should be able to expect to get the bat on that heater, especially with two strikes. Strike and Jared Washburn delivering the strike quickly up. Change up, takes it for a call, third strike. That's going to end the inning. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The White Sox still ahead. And Beckham's in the box. 
Second. Now they're losing a little Number bit in the defensive 15. department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just odd to make this move right now. 0-1 the count as we get going here in the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a rocket toward short. One away. Up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Center fielder. And Alex Rios up. He homered earlier in the ball game. It's nice to have a bat like this in the lineup because as you're going through the game, you know you've got a chance to score runs every time he comes to the plate. Hits it out of the ballpark. He's driving the ball. He's doing a little bit of everything. Swung on, liner to right. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. That's going to bring up A.J. Przinski. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. First pitch. Here it comes. This one's grounded hard up the middle. That's one. And two. They got both of them that time. No strikeouts. But you talk about confidence. Four pitches. Three batters gone. And we'll see the Rays coming up next. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne, along with John Crux, Steve Phillips, we bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, if you can get a start like this every time out from your starting pitcher, you're going to take it. He kept you in the ball game, pitched pretty well, and now turns it over to the bullpen. Now the first pitch. Fastball in there for a called strike. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. You're One okay. away. The Tampa Bay Ray. Designated hitter, number 20. And we're going to see Joyce here. Career, three for 15 off the White Sox. One out, nobody on. Here's the delivery, and he takes the ball, 1-0. Oh. You know, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. Here's one swung on and missed. Strike Foul fastball, now the count, 1-2. and two. Looks like the hitter's waiting for a pitch that he can get up in the zone to drive a little bit. That's why he went down to the zone with that four-seamer. Holds off on the slider, two and two. When you throw a breaking ball like this, you want to start it on the corner and break it off the zone, trying to get the hitter to chase. The hitter didn't take the bait here. That's a foul ball. Three, slider two. just about had him, three two count. Payoff pitch. Fastball got him two down. Well, they went away right there, and he put a pretty good swing on it, but just couldn't quite make contact. Walking back to the dugout now. And it's B.J. Upton now. He flew out his last time up. Two outs and nobody on. And the first pitch. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. The pitch. And he leaves that one alone as B.J. Upton showing patience, evens the count. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdown's there. You only need four outs left to win this ballgame. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. No hits. Nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. The White Sox maintaining their lead. Here's Mark Tian leading it up. Number 25. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. And that's by him 0 1. Well, he got a little over anxious on that last sinker and swings and misses. Up the middle, Howell. That's one down. You have to have quick reflexes on the mound. You're the closest to the hitter of anybody else on the field. The ball got back on him. He was able to make the play, moves his feet to be able to get the momentum going to first base for the throw. Nice job. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Here's the delivery. 
That one's drilled to short. And that's going to bring Scott Pesednik up. Steve, sometimes that pitch down the middle you want to drive. He chose to take it the other way. Well, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. Now just out in front of that sinker, and he comes up empty. On the way. Hit sharply towards the hole. Uh, 0 1 mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate, and he pays for it. RBI situation Alexei Ramirez. He's driven home three in this one. Well, he's already produced three runs in this game. He's clearly swinging the hot bat. You know they're going to be very careful with him here. He deals. There's a swing towards the hole. And it gets down. Hit after hit. They just keep on coming. He's got four today. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's Let's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody Number else. 14. Third most in hits. Paul sixth in batting Fernando. average. And you can also tell that, that hitting in clutch situations does not really bother him. Ranked among the top 15 hitters in the league. Hitting with runners in scoring position. Bases are loaded here with only one away. And he starts Canerco out. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. 273, the lifetime number off J.P. Howard. Slide to right. It gets down, and that's going to drive in Kotze. Now two runs are in. And he's in there. Could not get him. Sometimes risky business when you go up to that extra base. Yeah, Gary, that dive in the second base was the key as well. He didn't slow down at all. Able to extend his arms and get in there. Indeed. Lopes called on to do the hurling now as the Rays decide to bring in a reliever. First pitch to Quinton. Couldn't get around in time. 0-1. Well, this is just one of those pitches right there that he had a chance to put in play, but his indecisiveness caused him to hesitate. And when you hesitate, you are lost, especially in the batter's box. And they score it. Runner on second and two outs. Jordan Beckham. Can't connect. It's on one. Now swing and a shot towards second. Throws to first in time. That's three down. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. End of the order. Ready to do some work at the plate. Leading off hitter Deanna Navarro. Trying to get here. Just one for three thus far. And the first pitch. Swung on, line softly towards right center. And that's going to be a base hit for Navarro. Coming to bat. So Kyle the Crawford will come ready. up next. Left well, that's the start they Number wanted first. right there. You get the first guy on with the inning. No out. Big things could happen now. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. He's been chosen to take over out there. Johnny faces these Tampa Bay hitters today. What's he concentrating on? Well, Bobby Jenks is one of these big, big closers that come in the game, kind of like they were back in the 80s and the early 90s. A big guy that comes out and throws absolute gas. Easy, smooth motion that generates 98 to 100 mile an hour fastball. He's a strikeout pitcher, and he finishes games. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground, and, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb, and running out of time right now, only two outs remaining, so they've got to get something going and keep it going. Fouled off that first pitch, and won the count. Well hit towards the middle, and he's got it now. So Bartlett is retired. Now down to their final out right here, Gary. So made it looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. Ober up now. Here's a swing, sinking liner to left. That should be a base hit. And here's Navarro heading home. And the run gets in. Tampa Bay, just ride these bats as long as you can. Carlos 
The best hitters in the game use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. Even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate, that's what he does right there. Guys prolong their career, not with power, but with base hits that are hit that way. Here's a fly ball. Could be it. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. The White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. Dominating performance, Gary. And it's that time of the broadcast where we bestow the Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. What a game from Alexei Ramirez. You know, the big thing you look at as you're making out your lineup as a manager is where the tough outs are. And today, those tough outs were with this hitter. He's a consummate professional hitter. He always throws a good at bat out there. And that's why he's our Pepsi Clutch performer. And Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings. But the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports crew. We'll see you soon.